now we come to the most important uh, technique of this whole series. It, I call it outside the puzzle. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. If you look at this puzzle, there's all kinds of places where there's maybe one, two, three cells left, but there's lots of places where there's more than three cells left. What do you do if you have a puzzle and there's four or five cells left? Let's take like this one here, one, two, three, four cells left. This one, one, two, three, four, five, six cells left. Now, let's say you don't see this one, ignore that for the time being, because I want to show you what I mean by an outside the puzzle. Here we have one, two, three, four, five uh, empty cells. The time will come when you're doing your puzzle where you've tried every technique, you've done TMB, you've done, you've done the cross system, all that sort of thing, and you're stuck. This is the time you look for a row, a column, or a puzzle, or, or a, a block, I mean, that's only got, say, three or four cells empty. I'm going to choose a row in this case where there's five cells empty and show you the technique of how you can make things really happen. So watch. Let's look at this row here. I'm going to just demonstrate with that row there. There are one, two, three, four, five numbers missing. Now the question is, what are those five numbers that are missing? And we'll work it out by going one to nine, and we put them over here on the right-hand side somewhere to help you remember. If you're very experienced, you don't need to put them out there, uh, but if you're a beginner, it's a good idea to put them out there. So, in, you look at this cell here. Is there a one in this block? Yes, there is, so it cannot be a one. One can't go there because you'll repeat it. Otherwise, you can't have a repeated number in a row, column, or block. Let's take two. Is there a two? Well, there's a two down here, so you can't have a two there. Otherwise, you'll be repeating the twos in that column. What about three? Uh, three. Now, are we look in the block here. Is there a three in the block? No. Is there a three down here in this column? No. So a three is a possibility, and I'll put it there. Let's go to four. Well, there's already a four in that block, so we can't have two fours. Fives. There's already a five in that block. Can't have two fives. Six. Can't have a six either. Sevens. Uh, is there a seven in this block? No. Is there a seven down here? No. So a seven is a possibility. So there are two possible numbers that could be in that cell. Now let's go to this one. Well, we know a 1 won't work, we know a 2 won't work, we know a, a 3, let me see now. There's a 3 down in here, so that can't be a 3 up in there, we can't repeat the 3. 4, there's a 4 already there, there's a 5 and a 6. Uh, 7 is missing, because there's no 7 down in here. And the other one was an 8. So those are only two numbers that, possible numbers that can go in that cell. Now let's go to this one. One. Well, we've already got a one. We've already got a two. Is there a three? No. There's, is there a three in the block here? No. Is there a three down in here? No. So the three is a possibility. Four. We've already got a four here, so we can't have a four there. Uh, what's the next one? Five. Is there a five in this block? No. Is there a five down here? No. So we'll have to, we, there's a possibility of having a five in there. Now let's go over to this, these two cells here. What is missing? We have uh, uh, two, is two. is there a two in here? No, there's a two, no, there's not a two. Uh, is there a two down in here? No. What about three? Is there a three in here? No. Is there a three down in here? No. So that's missing. Four is already there. What about a five? Uh, five. There's no five in here. There's no five down in here. So we can put a five in. Now, if I go over to this one, we one can't. We've already got a one here and a one in the block. Two is also missing, so we put a two in. What about a three? Three down in here? No, there's no three, so we can put the three in. What about a four? No, we can't do a five. Five. Let's have a look at the five again. There's no five in here. There's no five down here. A five is missing. Wow. 
Now what we've done is that we've found out what's missing in each of these cells. So to help you remember, we can go, uh, was it two, three over here, this is outside the puzzle. Two, three, five is missing, uh, seven is missing, and eight is missing. Now what we've done is that first of all we found out what numbers were missing. Two, three, five, seven, eight. Now we find out what numbers could go in each of these cells using what I just showed you. Now comes the question, is there a little number there that is only appearing once? Have a look at that. You may see it. It's an eight. This is the only eight in all that row, which means that this becomes an eight. Okay, that becomes an eight. So that will make it into a big eight. Now we could say because that's an eight, this has to become a seven. Well, we're not sure if that's going to be a seven. It could be up there. We don't know. So leave it. Now a question comes, what do I do now? Well, this is the neat thing about this outside the puzzle technique. Well, you continue on with your puzzle because as you continue on with your puzzle, suddenly you'll be able to solve some of these numbers. Let me show you, for example, let's just for fun say a five turned, whoops, I think I originally had a five down here. Just let me put it in, okay? Let's say that was originally a five. Let's say a five suddenly appeared here. Now you have a left, you have a right. Up here, it has to be in the center. It cannot be in this cell because there's a five there. It has to be in that cell. So you've got yourself a new number because you've got that five there. Now let's take, take rub that out. We'll put the five in. Now, once you've put the five in, this is an important little technique, you immediately look to see if there's another five in that row or somewhere else in here, a small five. Well, it just so happens we've got two fives over here, so now that that five is in that row, you, this row cannot have more than one five, so we can get rid of this five. Now, what does that do? So we've got rid of now, we've got rid of the eight, we've got rid of the five, and now, what does this mean? This means we have a matching pair. And in a previous session, I mentioned this, that if you have a matching pair, any other two or three along this row can be removed. Because one of those is going to be a two, and one of those is going to be a three. That's what a matching pair does for you. Now, if that's the case, have a th oh, there's a three over here. That three has to go, which means that this becomes now your seven. Now, let's say you were uh, go going on with the puzzle and you suddenly came across, say, let's, for example, uh, uh, a three here. Now, what's the ramification of that? We have a top, we have a middle, Therefore, this has to become a three. Now, what's the ramification of that, considering looking what you've got along here? You may have seen this already. You can probably have noticed already, this can't be a three, because we've got a big three. So you get rid of that three, and this becomes a two. If that becomes a two, this can go. And therefore, this becomes a three. What have we done? We have solved a whole row just understanding how to do the uh, out of the puzzle technique. Now let's do another one. We managed to do this one up on top, but now let's try this one just as a demonstration. The first step is to say in along here which numbers are missing. Well, we've got a one. We don't have a two, so we can put that over there. Uh, three we have, we don't have a four, so we can put a four in there. Uh, five we've got, six, we, don't, we can put the six over here, we don't have a six. Seven, we don't have a seven, okay. Uh, seven, eight, we don't have an eight. And nine, we do have a nine, so we have 
one, two, three, four, five empty cells, two, four, six, seven, and eight. Now, the next step. Here we go. We look at this cell. We'll go this way. Okay, we look at this cell and we say, is there a one in here or is there a one along here? Yes, there is a one along there, so we can't put a one in here. Now, twos. Is there a two up here? Yes, there's a two up there. Uh, here's a three. There's a four missing. Don't see a four anywhere, so we can put the four in. Five is there. A six. Is there a six? No, there's no six. There's not a six up in here. There's not a six in here. Seven. Uh, there's no seven in here, and there's no seven along there, so there's a seven. Eight is here, and nine is there. So we've got those possible numbers. Now let's look at this one. A one is there, and it's also over there, so we can't have a one. A two, uh, let me see, two can be there. Uh, three is already there. Four is missing. There's no four in here. There's no four along there. There's no four up in here. If we put that one in. Five is there. Six is there. We already got it. Seven. We're missing a seven. We've got an eight and we've got a nine. Okay. So we've got two, four, and seven possibilities in there. Let's have a look at this one. We have the one. There's a two already spoken for. Uh, Hmm. The three is already here. Uh, four is there. Five is there. We're missing a six. Uh, seven. No sevens up in here and down there. So there's a seven possibility. And there is an eight. Let's see if there's an eight. There's no eight in here. And there's no eight along there. So an eight is missing as well. Oh boy. This is, the, this is an interesting one. Let's have a look at this one, the six. One, there's a one, can't be a one, can't be a two, can't be a three, can't be a four, can't be a five, could be a six, can't be a seven, can't be an eight, and it can't be a nine. Whoopee, guess what? We don't have to worry about that. We know for sure that that is a six. Now, if you hadn't put, gone through that procedure, you may have found it difficult to find that. So we now have a six. We, we can cross this one off. And because of that six, we can get rid of this six here. We can get rid of this six here. Well, that was a great discovery. Neat. Makes you excited when things like that happen. Now let's do this final one here. We've got a one. We have a two is missing, I think. There's no two in here. Two. Three is there, uh, four is there, five is down here, six is there, seven. There's no seven along here, and there's no seven in here, and there's no seven up there, so it's a seven. Eight is there, and nine can't be there. So we've now got all the possible numbers in these five empty, oh, now it's only four empty cells. Now let's look closely. Is there, a, first step, is there a number that's only there once? It's an eight again. Well, I never. So let's put the eight in. See, the eight doesn't occur anywhere else, so we can put the eight in. Sometimes it's easy to miss that if you've got a very complicated puzzle. There we go. Now let's, uh, let's just for argument's sake, that the puzzle continues on and you discover that a two occurs here. What does that do? What are the ramifications of that? Well, first of all, you can't have a 2 there. This becomes a 7. So if that becomes a 7, what is the ramification of that? Well, go along the row here. Oop, that 7 can go. And that 7 can go, which means that this is a 4. Whee! So we make this a 4. And if that's a 4, well, look at this. If that is a 4, then this 4 can no longer be there. So this becomes a 2. Isn't that amazing? Just because one number turned up down there, we were able to get all those extra numbers. 
That's exciting. Now, if you can learn this technique, you'll be able to do not just easy puzzles, but you will be also be able to do medium, medium puzzles. If you go onto my website, it's called sudokuguy.com. And on the website, you can scroll down and there's a whole pile of frequently asked questions. Bye for now. Have a great time. It's been wonderful sharing my knowledge with you.